السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. هلو أه أه Today إن شاء الله we'll discuss uh, an approach to neurological examination. The uh, neurological examination station three, uh, usually the neurological case and the cardiology case. Uh, in the neurological case, uh, some persons or some doctors uh, might uh, think that it's difficult or uh, it's a challenge, but uh, <clears throat> believe me, inshallah, it will be an easy station. Just uh, is an, uh, you need to know the steps of exam, as we mentioned before, uh, plus the uh, some equations and some uh, uh, lesions with a specific uh, characteristic features. So you can uh, gathering the uh, abnormality with each other to make a specific diagnosis. Okay. So that is a challenging in neurology. You need to collect uh, the data to reach a specific diagnosis, to reach that this is upper motor neuron lesion or lower motor neuron lesion, or it is a cerebellar lesion, or this is an extra pyramidal lesion like this. Uh, do not take it separately. Do not take uh, reflexes alone, sensation alone, power alone, uh, cranial nerves alone. You need to collect. Uh, all these informations with each other so you will get uh, the benefits. Um, firstly, I'd like to uh, mention to you that uh, the success is usually a gift from Allah. Just do your best. Uh, never give up. Uh, it's a challenging. Uh, try to train yourself, as I mentioned to you before, to do the steps of examination in a subconscious manner. This is very important. So that in the exam, you are concentrating and focusing in getting the abnormality and the finding, try to inter, uh, integrate this finding with each other to reach to a specific diagnosis or at least differential diagnosis, okay? Uh, this need uh, more practice from your side to uh, do the steps of examination rapidly. You need to adapt yourself to check uh, examination of upper limbs, examination of the lower limbs, examination of cranial nerves, examination of the motor system like this in a fluent and rapid professional technique. Um, as I told you, this uh, online uh, session is not a replacement for hands-on examination. You need to do this in exam, real scenario to uh, get the uh, most uh, benefit, okay? Inshallah, we put an uh, agenda. Uh, we need to know what is uh, lower limb examination upper limb examination, cranial nerves examination, cerebellar examination, and gait examination, and finally the uh, fundus examination. Sometimes it comes separately in station uh, in a short case, or it can be uh, needed uh, in a neuroophthalmology diagnosis. But this is the most common exam uh, orders requested. Examine upper limbs, examine lower limbs, Examine cranial nerves, sometimes station comes like this. Examine cranial nerves, examine the uh, cerebellum, or sometimes you need to examine the cerebellum plus the upper limb or lower limb, or to examine cerebellum plus the cranial nerves like this. The gait examination is very essential in neurological uh, examination, especially in examination of the lower limb. Lower limb examination, you need to check the gait of the patient plus the back. Okay? Uh, some authors, some doctors recommend to do the gait examination at the early, or you can do it later after finishing the exam. Each one has benefit and uh, pros and cons, okay? If you get to examine the gait firstly, you might uh, catch a specific diagnosis, like patient has a stroke, so you would find a circumduction gait, okay? You can find a, a high stability gait indicating uh, to say colon, okay? Uh, peripheral neurons. You can uh, check the uh, slow shuffling gait of Parkinson. Okay, this is the advantage that by gait you can uh, get a clue, but this cannot be uh, a common or a routine. This is number one. Uh, this is the advantage of starting by gait. If you uh, the disadvantage of that that you allow the patient to stand and to go uh, walk some distance and come again, this will take some time. It will take time from you and from the patient, and also uh, sometimes the patient can be uh, unable to walk or has weakness, or need a walking aid or is on wheelchair. So you will waste your time for uh, one item, which is a gate, 
but you forget to examine the motor system, sensor system, dorsal column, uh, cerebellum, like this. Uh, so better to uh, postpone the gate examination to be at the end of examination just to uh, catch all the uh, modalities or all the items of examination. Then after that, the remaining issue is the gate. If you even forget to do the gate examination, you can mention to the examiner, please, sir, I'd like to examine the gate. Okay? Like, he will ask you, what would you expect to find the gate if he is insisting or if the examiner is insisting to know what is the gate. Okay? I hope this point to be clear. Uh, we'll do topic of discussion. Today, uh, this, um, Anyway, we will discuss today the uh, upper motor neuron region, uh, lower motor neuron region, uh, spastic paraparesis, and uh, upper motor neuron region plus lower motor neuron region in the same patient, the mixed lesions, and motor neuron disease, especially the uh, most characteristic the famous motor neuron disease, cervical myelopathy, and the uh, cerebromyelia. Uh, these three regions are characterized by uh, mixed upper and lower uh, motor uh, neuron uh, Then after that, we, we speak about cerebellar uh, syndrome, multiple sclerosis, hemiplegia, monoparesis, okay, and uh, peripheral neuropathy. All this uh, are yeah, separate entity. Proximal myopathies and uh, myasthenia gravis, and lastly, the Parkinson's. Okay. Let us start by neurological lesions. What uh, will be uh, the most important neurological lesions that we can classify the lesions under these categories? Number one, the pyramidal tract lesion. Okay. It's called upper motor neuron lesion. This pyramidal tract lesion is a, a tract that's responsible for the motor action. It is start from the uh, motor uh, cortex area, then go to the muscle. So it is responsible for the motor action. Usually, if any lesion, an upper motor neuron lesion, it will lead to uh, hypertonia, hyperreflexia, positive plantar effects. We'll speak about uh, these details later, but just to uh, highlight the issues. Number two is the extra pyramidal. Extra pyramidal mostly is a Parkinson disease. Either this is a Parkinson or Parkinson plus syndrome. We will mention that later. And what is the difference? Uh, just to note that the main three cornerstone features of Parkinson is radicalnesia, rigidity, and distinct trims. Okay. Third is a cerebellar region. Cerebellum is a separate region. We, and we cannot put it under upper motor or lower motor, but it has specific uh, characteristic uh, lesions. We'll, uh, we will speak about that later. Usually, cerebellar lesion will lead to what's called uh, damage, like this bed, cocamnesia, ataxia, astagmas, uh, resting uh, tremors, uh, post uh, pointing, like this. Okay. Then the lower motor neuron lesions. Lower motor neuron lesions it start uh, from the area of anterior horn cell till the reaching to the muscle. Okay, I will give you now a picture about the tract of pyramidal tract to be uh, clear of this. Yeah, you know, pyramidal tract start from the uh, motor cortical area in the brain, then go to the uh, first organ neuron, reply at the anterior horn cell. This is one tract. Then from anterior horn cell of the spinal cord, it will go to the muscles, through the anterior horn cell, root, peripheral nerve, then muscle, and between the nerve and the muscle is the neuromuscular junction. Any lesion starting from anterior horn cell, go to, go to the root, uh, root uh, injury, peripheral neuropathy, uh, neuromuscular junction, all it can be considered as 
uh, considered as lower motor neuron lesion. The most common lesion in anterior horn cell, like polio, motor neuron disease, and uh, lead poisoning. Okay, for a root like any uh, radiculopathy, peripheral neuropathy, there is a specific uh, causes of peripheral neuropathy we'll mention later, and there is a specific uh, uh, mnemonic for it A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, A, B, I'll mention that later. Most common is again Paris syndrome and the chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy. Neuromuscular junction, the famous one is the myotinia gravis, Lambert Eaton myotinic syndrome, botulism, organophosphorus poisoning. And lastly, any lesion in the muscle, either this is a hereditary lesion in the muscle, like Duchenne or Baker or something like this, or inflammatory lesion in the muscle, like any connective tissue disorder, rheumatoid, uh, lobus, next connective tissue disease, etc., dermatomyositis, polymyositis, or acquired lesion of the muscle, like drug induced, like uh, endocrinobuses, like Cushing uh, disease, or something like this, uh, statin induced, uh, steroid induced, etc. We will go to the details of this, but just this is, I'd like to map the neurological lesion in this book. Okay. Let's go to the most important tracts in neurology uh, that we would like to speak in details about. Uh, we have three tracts. First one is a corticospinal tract, which is called pyramidal tract, then dorsal column tract, and the uh, spinothalamic. Let's uh, discuss in details corticospinal tract, which is called the uh, pyramidal tract, as you mentioned before. It is a descending tract. It's come from the motor cortical area to the muscle to carry the motor order from brain to the muscle for action of the muscle. Okay, this is number one. Any lesion in the corticospinal tract, or it's called pyramidal tract, it can, we can classify it into uh, upper motor neuron lesion if it is still the area of anterior horn cell. And from anterior horn cell downward, it will be a lower motor neuron lesion. Okay, the second track is dorsal column. Okay, I'll give you a photo here. This dorsal column is uh, this, uh, this is a spinal cord. Uh, this area is uh, related to the dorsal column. Uh, here is the fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus. And it does not matter the names, but here is the uh, pathway of the uh, dorsal column. Here is the corticospinal tract. This is the area of pathway of the uh, pyramidal tract. And here the uh, spinal, uh, spinal thalamic tract. There is lateral spinal thalamic tract here. And there is here anterior spinal thalamic tract. Okay. Okay. So, as we mentioned, the uh, pyramidal tract is carrying the motor power from the cortex to the muscles. The dorsal column is responsible for vibration and uh, position, sense of position and proprioception. So, any affection or a, the carrying of vibration and the proprioception is by the dorsal cord. Okay. Lastly, the spinothalamic tract, the lateral part, is carrying the pain and temperature. The anterior spinothalamic tract is carrying the uh, crude touch. Okay. Uh, we will come later to the steps of the exam regarding. We are doing the sensation, especially sense of position, vibration, sense, uh, uh, pain break sensation, and the fourth one is the uh, crude sensation by the cotton. So usually uh, the cotton, you are teach, uh, checking the uh, crude touch. By the pain break, you are checking the pain. So by uh, cotton and pain break, you are checking the lateral and the anterior uh, spinal salamic. Okay. The remaining part regarding the sensation are checking by, by the tuning fork, you are checking the vibration. And when you check the position of the patient or position of the joint, okay, you are checking the position also for the dorsal cord. So this is to illustrate that when you are doing the cotton, so cotton is covering here the uh, crude touch, or you are doing the uh, pain sensation, this is spinal cramp, this is flat, okay. While you are checking the vibration and the uh, proprioception, you are checking the dorsal column. Check. Okay. Just to uh, highlight here that uh, I will give you the detail of the tract later, but to know that uh, the spinal thalamic tract and the dorsal column, the dorsal column is uh, go through this, uh, I mean, the same ipsilateral way of the spinal cord. 
if you are speaking about spinal cord injury, like hemi section, as we mentioned, we mentioned later, hemi section, this hemi section, section will affect the dorsal column and will affect the spinal thalamic tract. Dorsal column here is not crossed. So this means that if I do a hemi section of the spinal cord, like this spinal segment in the right side, the affection of the dorsal column will be in this area, the same epsilateral right side. Okay, that's what I mean by not crossed here. While the patient will suffer the same one, which there is a lesion in the hemi spinal uh, hemi section of the spinal cord at this level at the right side. This patient will suffer of an uh, contralateral below the lesion here. He will suffer from a spinocinamic affection. I mean loss of the vein and temperature. Okay, that's why this uh, very important uh, slides regarding a hemi section of the spinal cord, which is called brown sequard syndrome. There will be a pyramidal tract lesion in the same side plus dorsal column lesion in the same side, and there is a contralateral loss of the pain and temperature of the opposite side. Okay, let's speak about each tract of these tracts by a little details. I would not like to go to in details of uh, anatomy, but this is very essential to uh, to let you aware by uh, how is the pathophysiology and how is the anatomy. Uh, is uh, running on. Okay. Let's start by the corticospinal tract, which is called a pyramidal tract. It's called the pyramidal P2. The cut section is like a pyramid when they do a cut section here in the spinal cord or in the brainstem. The corticospinal tract, there is two uh, motor neurons. There is two uh, stations. We can say two stations or two motor neurons. Here is the uh, cortical, motor cortical area. The signal is coming from up to down, as we mentioned before. It is a, a motor order from the motor uh, cortical area of the brain down to reach to the muscles. It is going through this internal capsule. Okay, then after internal capsule, it comes to the brain stem, going to the medulla, and inside the medulla, there is a decursation and go to the opposite side till it is go down to the specific segment needed for uh, innervation of this muscle and there is a station here or they lie here in the anterior horn cell. This is the anterior horn cell in the ventral horn of the spinal cord. After this first rely, there is a second station will start from anterior horn cell going through the ventral root, ventral root of the spinal cord then to uh, make a nerve, peripheral nerve. This peripheral nerve will go to the specific muscle and rely here in the neuromuscular junction, then reach to the muscle, then give the order of the muscle to do a flexion of this and extension, for example. So we will find here a two colors. The blue, the blue color is from the motor cortical area till the anterior horn cell, and the red color is from the anterior horn cell till passing through the nerve and the muscle neuromuscular junction till reaching to the muscle. Any lesion will affect this blue tract either in the internal capsule either in the brain stem, either in any spinal cord above the specific spinal cord that is related to the, this specific muscle, or this will lead to upper motor neuron here, okay? But any lesion will affect the tract from anterior horn cell down through the nerve, through the neuromuscular junction, through the muscle, in this blue, uh, sorry, in this red, uh, track this will lead to lower motor neuron function. Okay, this is very uh, important to be uh, you know, clear in your mind, uh, so that you can know what is meant by upper motor neuron region and lower motor neuron region. This is regarding the anatomy, and for sure it will affect the clinical picture of the patient. There is a specific manifestation related to the upper motor neuron lesion and other related to the lower motor neuron lesion. So here, all the blue tract is upper motor neuron lesion and any lesion in the red tract will lead to a lower motor neuron lesion. Is my voice. Let's go to the uh, next uh, tract. We speak about the dorsal 
كولم a dorsal column tract okay for dorsal column tract as we mentioned before this tract is responsible for it's called dorsal column or posterior column because it is related to the posterior part of the spinal cord segment it is related to or responsible for vibration and sense of position or proprioception this means when you examine the patient uh, finger or big toe regarding where is the position it's up or down like this you are checking sense of position okay when you use the tuning fork in upon your prominence either in the upper limb or lower limb you are checking the vibration both vibration and the uh, proprioception and sense of position of the patient this carried by the dorsal cord so the dorsal column will start from down up okay this is not like pyramidal tract from up down dorsal column from down to up it carries the proprioception sensation and the mechanoreceptors from the periphery going to there is we have here in dorsal colon three stations or three uh, rely okay the first order uh, neuron is coming from the proprioception receptors here going to the dorsal dorsal uh, horn cell and the dorsal uh, root of the spinal cord and go in the same ipsilateral way from the spinal cord till reaching to the medulla and make a rely here in the dorsal column nuclei in the middle after that this is first station second station will start now from the dorsal column column of the medulla making a medullary decussation to go to the other side and to go through the uh, up till reaching to the thalamus of the ipsilateral side this is the second station the third station will start here from the thalamus till reaching to the sensory cortical area in the brain okay so we have three stations from periphery till the medulla in the same side so all over all through the tract from spinal cord till reaching the brain stem it is passed it is passing in the ipsilateral way then make a crossing uh, in the medulla to reach to the salamus the contralateral side then from the salamus to the uh, uh, sensory area in the brain okay uh, for the uh, lateral spinal, let's speak about the lateral spinal salamic tract. It is also a, a sensation tract which carry the pain and temperature. So it will go from down to up. Okay. So lateral spinal salamic tract and the dorsal column tract is from down to up. It's opposite to pyramidal tract, which is from up to to down. Okay. Lateral spinal salamic tract. It also has uh, three stations, and the uh, coming from It's coming from the uh, it's coming from the uh, pain and temperature for the uh, pain receptors and the thermo uh, receptor in the periphery. Then go to the dorsal uh, uh, dorsal root ganglion. Then to here in the uh, dorsal root of the spinal cord. And here will be the first rely. So notice that the first rely, rely here in the uh, nearby spinal segment the second order neuron it will come from the dorsal root of the spinal cord making a spinal decussation okay in the level of the spinal cord then go up till reach to the salamus then from the salamus to the primary sensory area okay this is the three roots of the lateral spinal salamic here you can notice that if uh, a patient has a uh, uh, lesion in a uh, hemi spinal cord affection like if he has a uh, injury here by the way in the left uh, hemi section of this spinal cord so this patient will suffer from a loss of the pain and temperature from the right side okay because when you make this lesion in the left side of the spinal cord if there is any lesion here in the hemi left hemi uh, section here it will affect the carrying track till the sensory sensation you are feeling the sensation above here so it will not reach to the higher center so the patient will have a loss of the pain and temperature of the right as we give here an example if you have a c5 injury in the spinal salamic tract in the left side the patient will have a pain and temperature loss from the right side but here we will not say in the same level not in the same level of the c5 till down 
uh, it will be from the C7 down. There is uh, some like anastomosis or what's uh, called a uh, uh, lizard tract. This lizard tract is some innervation here so that when you uh, make a hemisection of the spinal cord of the C5 in one side, the affected uh, lesion of loss of pain temperature will not be in the same le level from C5 down, it will be from the C7 down, okay? So that to rem uh, remind you, it is from the same of the name of the lateral spinal salamic tract, LST, so lower segment three, so the loss of the sensation will be a little bit lower than the level of the injury, okay? By this anatomy, you can easily uh, notice what is meant by the uh, brown sequard syndrome. brown sequard, sequard syndrome, this is a name of a French scientist. Uh, he uh, would like to illustrate what will happen if I make a cut of a spinal cord like this in one patient, like hemisection of spinal cord, like, uh, either iatrogenic, which will be a difficult, or by trauma. And definitely by trauma, it will not be a uh, sharp and in a good architecture like this. But we are supposing for an academic teaching or for an um, anatomical purpose or knowledge, if we making a cut of the spinal cord, any section of the spinal cord, what will be expected to happen? We can say the following. If this patient, we make a cut of the spinal cord here, say by a stab wound or a knife or anything at the level of say T8 spinal segment. So we have now three tracks will be affected, okay? Number one, corticospinal tract, which is a pyramidal tract. Number two, the dorsal column. Number three, the spinal salamic tract, okay? This is the spinal cord, which is suffered of injury. This is corticospinal tract. If we cut the tract here, it will be affected here. So this patient will have in the same ipsilateral side manifestation of pyramidal tract lesion in the form of upper motor neuron lesion in the same side of the region. This is number one. Number two, regarding the dorsal column tract, there will be a dorsal column affection in the same side of the region manifested by loss of the uh, proprioception and the vibration sensation in this side. And there will be in the ips, uh, contralateral side, there is a loss of pain and the temperature due to affection of the spinosalamic, if the lateral spinosalamic tract, which is carrying the sensation from, from this side. And we to look at this, this sensation like this and to go like this. So, the spinosalamic tract, which will be, will be affected here in the right side, will be manifested as left-sided loss of the pain and temperature of that patient, which will be start the level. Here is the level. We cut, I'm making the cut here as a level of T8, but the upper parameter tract will start here, and the dorsal corner affection will be at the same level, but the pain and temperature will be a three-segment lower, as we mentioned before, three-segment three lower, in the lateral spinal salamic tract, okay, due to the effect of leisure tract, which makes some uh, anastomotic innervation between here. Is it clear to you? Are you following me? Is it clear? Very good. Let's go to yeah. the uh, next issue is what we will do. This was a uh, small introduction. I know it is uh, not too well good because we are not like the anatomy or something like that, but we try to make it uh, simple and uh, interesting to know what is the lesions and uh, where is the lesion due to the anatomy is important in knowing the uh, neurological lesion. Uh, here we will go to the uh, start of uh, examination of the patient neurologically, what we will do, what we need to do. Before examination, we need to do the uh, sterilization of the hand, as we mentioned before, and uh, greeting, uh, introduce yourself to the patient. Uh, I am Dr. Mourabi, uh, shaking his hand to the patient, and tell uh, then the patient what you will uh, go to do with him, like taking a verbal consent. I would like to examine you, I would like to examine your legs, I'd like to examine your hands, or 
I'd like to examine you in general. Uh, do you have any pain or discomfort? Uh, please let me know. Okay. Okay, uh, there is one question regarding the lateral spinocelamic tract, why the lesion will be manifested to the uh, loss of pain with temperature. Look, uh, I will go again to this. This is what's called lesor tract. Lesor tract, it makes some uh, anastomosis between the uh, in this uh, dorsal uh, core of the spinal cord, bet between it and the few segments above and down. There is like anastomosis or a neurological innervation between the two or three segments uh, above and down, okay? So uh, when there is a cut in this area, in the left side of the hemi section of the spinal cord, not, not it will affect the same spinal segment which carrying the benign temperature here, okay? There is Two or three anastomotic innervation. This is what's called lesion tract. So uh, the lesion will not be exactly at the same cutting. You are cutting here at the C5, but will not expect the loss and the pain and temperature in the C5 of this side. It will be two or three segments below. Okay, that's why we put that in the uh, this uh, photo in the brown sequel syndrome. The upper motor and dorsal column will be on the same side of the cutting. But the loss of pain at temperature will be a little segment below, two to three segments below. Okay, the cut here is an T5, but the pain at temperature lost in the other side is starting from the T10. Okay, I think the Zoom session will finish in less than one minute, uh, so better I will send another uh, link when we'll start the new topic of the, how to start the neurological examination. Thank you so much.